What's up, everybody? This is Rabbit Hedgehog. I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Law Tigers of Oklahoma, AGV Sport USA, and AMS Oil. We want to thank them for helping us provide funds for gear, equipment, and everything to help film what we do, and also keeping our bikes protected and the riders protected. Check out the description below for contact details. Well, hello there, YouTubers. This is the Rabbit Hedgehog, and once again, Chris Riggs with Freedom Scooters, or maybe Freedom Power Sports now, has once again given me the opportunity to take out his newest creation, and this one is actually fully a creation for Freedom uh, Motorcycles Fighter 200. Is what we have here, 197 cc, or 200, um, engine that is fuel injected, as you can see, we are a little muddy today because he gave it to me uh, to use as I would my own. I ride in all weather, so of course I'm going to get out here and be a little evil, but not too bad. But something to note is how does it perform in all things because riders want to know. And uh, we've done all the scenarios you could possibly think of, cold weather, warm weather, everything we've had this week. As you can see, mono shock in the rear. You have an inverted fork up front. This is completely stock, so this is its setup. It does have the inverted forks. Everything you see here is what it comes with at an MSRP of $2,999. There is a destination charge that will come with it. So note that there might be little price differences depending on where you are and what that destination is going to be all LED lights all the way around it. Fantastic working lights actually. A cool thing on this one is that when he designed it, he made it easy for the commuter. Made it easy to adjust the headlight. You can simply just give it a little push there. As you can see, it's on a bearing that holds itself steady. That way you can adjust the light without any tools. Works rather well, rather quickly as well. Massive TFT screen right there. The handlebars do have LED backlights as well. A USB 3.1 and a USB-C. Now on iPhone charging, they are working on that. They're getting that fixed right now. So iPhone 15 charging will be coming soon. Keep your eye out on that if you've bought one or if you plan to buy one. And uh, you, you'll, you'll have the ability to do everything you need to do on that. We have a full tank of gas. A little over 200 miles will be on this thing by the time I'm finished with it. Had 171 miles right now. It has a clock. Gear indication. Temperature. Fuel gauge. Trip A. Trip B. Regular odometer. Wonderful little display. Hit on the uh, left control here. It says set. Get my glove back on there real quick. You can go through, and as you can see, it will time out. You can change this for auto, day, night. That's cool to have. Go down to clock, brightness, unit, language, information about the ECU and everything. It is a Delphi system on board. All that accessible right there through the left hand grip. Flash the pass, regular brights turn signals, press enter to cancel, horn, engine cutoff switch. You do have this switch right here that you can do DRL, main light, hazard, and start. So, normal controls on it. Now everybody's going to ask, where is this thing from? Well, it is from China, and it is from Lonsian. Now they are a group that actually makes engines through a partnership between China and BMW, but they also have many more. They do MV Augusta, KTM, Aprilia, BMW. So this is where the F-Series engines come from, the parallel twins, the 850, 750, 900, the Tawano 660. There's several different engines that come from that plant. So he got this engine from them, 
It is one of a kind here in the U.S. There's nothing else here like it. Delphi Electronics came out, worked with him to get the EPA standards on it, fully certified. This is the stock setup on the exhaust, stock setup on the suspension, stock setup on everything you see here. Steel trellis frame, 269 pounds, super lightweight. So what is the Freedom Fighter 200? Many people may call this a Grom fighter, but that's not really fair to the Grom itself. The Grom is a 125cc, fuel injected, now a five speed, started out in its first generation as a four speed. You know, not exactly the fastest thing, but I'm gonna call it an inner urban commuter. And the reason for inner urban is because here in the United States, there is a certain aspect um, of traveling that you cannot do. If you are going to the interstate, you have to maintain a minimal speed. For the most part, and especially in the state of Oklahoma, check your jurisdictions where it applies, but in the state of Oklahoma, uh, anything less than a 175 is not actually allowed on the interstate itself because it simply cannot maintain speed. Now, some people say, well, the, the Grom can make the minimum speed. Minimum speed is only 40. In some places, it's 50. Well, it can maintain 40 and 50. Can it? You see, that's the whole thing. Depending on the load, depending on your condition, you may not be able to maintain that 40 to 50 miles an hour. You may be a little bit on the slow side because hills and other things and winds can affect your minimal speed. And that is not very good for a mini moto because you're sitting there at max power, you're gonna lose it. You might back off from 50 to 45. You might back off from even 40 to 35, just depending on condition. Not saying it's gonna happen, but it has happened and can happen. Whereas right now, as you can see, I'm heading straight for I-35 here in Oklahoma. Being ginger, because we of course have a little bit of rain today, Last time I took this, it was a wee bit slippery. I don't know what was on the ramp at that time, but always want to be keeping an eye out for whatever may be. But as you can see, I'm exiting the ramp at almost 70 miles an hour. I just hit it, just at pulling on. So the amazing thing that I have found in my week and basically going to be 200 miles or so with the freedom fighter 200 is its ability to actually handle interstate traffic comfortably uh the the wheel set on the groms and the z125s and some of the other mini motos are much much smaller at 12 inches we got 14 inches here on this one we have a suspension that's designed for a 330 pound rider uh, we are going to be, you know, going over this maybe next year because I hear that there's some changes that are coming. I mean, look at this. I got an indicated 80 right now. So hanging with traffic and everything, and, and it's stable. Stable as you can get out. It, it's shocking how good this little guy is. But at any rate, back to the front suspension. The front suspension itself does need some work for 2025. And this is something that Chris had talked to me about who's the owner of Freedom and uh, stating that he is going to be working on some changes for the 2025s as they go. Cause this is a first year. This is one that he went and had designed and did everything specific for our market. Because one thing about it is he's right. Here in the Midwest in Oklahoma City, we do not have very many motorcycles that are good for inter, interstate urban traffic because they can't handle the higher speeds of the interstate behind me where it's 75 for instance so this one here actually can and it gives us more of an opportunity to ride further and enjoy a commute a little bit better on a motorcycle that is small it is a fun like like i said you can tell i'm just one-handing this thing it is so stable 
It is well put together for a mini moto. It's just plain and simple. It, it hangs with the class. I mean, easy to ride. Fueling is great on it. The engine is responsive. Really comes alive after seven grand, but it, it has a 10,000 RPM redline, so the thing kind of screams. So it's exciting. That's what I've always loved about mini motorcycles. Mini motorcycles, you are taking them to the maximum effort that they can do, max power all the time, getting every bit of performance that you can on the bleeding edge of what it can do, and you're still within legal limit. That's what the appeal is, and that's what the fun is in mini motorcycles. That's why I love them to death, because they're just so dadgum fun and you really probably won't get in trouble for having the fun unless you're super hooligan now if you are one of those super hooligans this one has those built-in crash bars you can get the gist of where that's going it can do wheelies it can do all the fun things that you're looking to do if you want to stunt it because he approached people in the mini moto oh my goodness i am really getting some speed now <laughs> I just, I just tapped out 10,000 RPM at 85, so I actually hit the rev limiter in six gear right now. I, I, this is the, this is a great run we're having right now. I just wanted to show off some stuff, but my goodness gracious, it's, it's delivering right now. I think it's happy with the temperature. You know, it is air cooled after all, and, and air cooled sometimes when they get a nice temperature, you, you get a little bit more performance out of them. So. I'm getting a little bit better than expected right now and uh, it's just happily going along with it getting through traffic being able to pass it's amazing so anyway about the rabbit hedgehog here I'm around six foot tall I have a 32 inch end seam uh, the seating position on this is very comfortable uh, the one thing I like about the design is that you're able to hug the tank with your knees without hitting anything in the way like it doesn't have any points where you're having pressure points like you do the z125 or the grom when you're a little taller uh, the seat is a little bit more pointed forward i actually allowed my co-workers uh, because chris is wanting to get as much feedback uh, that we're all motorcycle people we love all the motorcycles glowing reviews but there's a couple of folks that are a little bit lankier a little taller uh, we got one who's about six foot two and another that is about six uh one or so and uh, they said that because they're a little smaller and stuff I'm a, I'm a little bit chunkier so i'm a little wider they said the seat being narrow and that way can force you into the the tank a little bit more than they're expecting but they also admitted that yes they're they're more cruiser riders and because of that it's possible that they're not used to how to brace yourself on a sport bike as we are because I'm, I'm used to more of a standard position anyway because I've ridden many many standards many many times so I'm able to just sit here perfectly almost upright uh, my feet come back to my hips basically whenever you go down to the pegs knees out a little bit back is mostly straight up arms are down to the elbows and then out with a little bit of a uh, angle down to the handlebar there so it's a very standard and comfortable position more comfortable than the z125 that i've had before and more comfortable than the grom because it doesn't have as wide uh, or as pressure pointy of a seat this seat actually works rather well it's very narrow and it's supportive enough i mean you're not going to go on an overly long trip with it it's going to be a commuter so therefore you're not going to need the seat for very very long but i could say that 30 to 45 minutes 50 minutes maybe over an hour at a time it's not a bad place to be now we are dealing with a single so we know that there's going to be some vibrations vibrations can be felt for sure throughout the motorcycle and that's going to be the nature of the beast being a single running at near 10,000 rpms maximum travel but when you're in the inner urban sides of the city when you're doing 35 to 45 miles an hour it's a very smooth motorcycle and it holds power just fine it, it is very happy at those speeds again it doesn't mind these highway speeds 
Now the mirrors, that's going to be part of the 2025 workovers. Thinking about doing bar ends on this instead of, of the standard mirrors here. And that's just to get a little bit better visibility and to see if they can get a little bit better mirror. This one's fitted with just some uh, parts bin mirrors. So this mirror doesn't have full traveled up, so I can't see out of it. This one's doing great, but you can see that vibration through the mirror for sure when you're riding. But you can still see clearly enough to know that you have a Kia coming next to you here in just a moment. So again, if I didn't mention my poundage with the speed I'm able to maintain even on some of the hills and stuff here, I'm around 209 pounds. And uh, I've had myself plus about 30 pounds of camera equipment on myself. And um, worst case scenario, I think I've slowed down, especially because you can see I've dived a little bit here. Uh, but I've slowed down to maybe 68, 69. So I'm still within realm of interstate speeds. See, we're getting over this hill and we're going to start climbing again in speed and there we go. So it's to be expected and on some cases I've had to do some downshifting back to fifth to pull that power back and get that momentum. But again, I don't expect this out of a 200. I, I am actually still at a loss for words. So some of you may know that I own a Royal Enfield Meteor 350. That Meteor 350, bigger engine, heavier motorcycle 421 pounds it has 20 horsepower at the crank and around 17 and a half at the wheel this one here in its stock trim which they are working on tunes for this so it's going to get better than this but this one's completely stock this one's at 19 horsepower at the crank and around 15 and a half at the wheel. So at 269 pounds and only a couple of horsepower here and there and maybe, I don't know the torque figures on this one, or the, the Royal Enfield's kind of in the same ballpark there as the horsepower figures. Um, this is faster because it doesn't have to pull as much weight the gearing you have an extra gear the infield only has five this one carries the full six so the gearing is just right to get those highway speeds and to be able to hold you at those speeds despite the disadvantage in displacement and a little disadvantage in horsepower but you have the advantage in weight again the flickability on this thing is quite remarkable and it, it's just it's just a very stable machine Yes, the, the front fork is a little soft. You can feel it every once in a while, but it's not softer than a Grom. If I was on a Grom right now, I would be bottoming out the back and the front just with my weight alone, where this one is capable of holding up my weight and traveling perfectly fine on some rutted, nasty roads. And I took this thing to some places. The mud that's on it when at the first of the video does not justify or, or, or does not uh, totally show uh, how much I actually did with this motorcycle at first because there was actually some big mud clods and stuff because I took it places that, that were iffy to just test the suspension out to see how well it did. And uh, it truly does just phenomenally well in that respect. I, I am completely shocked about it. And right now on these wet roads with, you know, traffic around and everything, it, it's so stable, handling just fine, great tires on it, great tread. I don't feel any slipping or nothing to worry about. I mean, it just does really well. The, the transmission is spot on. Uh, I will say the first few miles on it, I definitely did have some some issues with it going between first and second very notchy at first but as it's starting to wear in as the parts get warmed up and, and worn in because I, I picked up this motorcycle with I think three miles on it I had nothing on it 
so brand new um, I took it out and uh, also on the interstate and the, the ECU was still in a learning curve too so it didn't really have access to its full power or potential it felt like for first 30 miles and um, so I'm, I'm traveling and I'm sitting there going okay well this is typical for a 200 I expected this because I had a Van Van 200 and TW 200s are very much well similar in that they just can't get over that 50 to 60 maybe maybe they will touch 70 but not not always and the van van even had a, a uh, kicker with it when you got up to a certain point instead of just kind of hitting the rev limiter it would actually do a fuel cutoff and it would actually shut your motorcycle down and you'd have to do a real quick restart sequence at, at over I think it was 68 69 miles an hour is where I hit that 70 and then I'd have to restart so I never took those motorcycles on the interstate very often because I just wasn't comfortable with it because I didn't want to have fuel cut off while I'm traveling at speed because people don't realize that's what's happening to you and uh, you know they'll just run into you because you don't have lights or anything you don't have presentation so to take this out here tells you how much I actually trust it. It works great in cityscapes. It's good for stop and go traffic. There's no heat coming off of the engine or anything. We've had some days where we got up into the 70s and I took this through downtown Oklahoma City where I work at to do some errands like uh, tag office and some other stuff I do for my job. And uh, I mean, it, it just cruises down through there. It's easy to get in and out of traffic with. It's easy to park because it's so so small that you can just get into places. It, it's perfect for that. And then it can get me 23 miles to home down the actual interstate. That is, that is not a normal activity for a 200cc motorcycle. Even my XT250, I don't feel like was this fast. I know my, like I said, my infield's not this fast. It, it hits a wall at 75 miles an hour and it's done. It, it's, a, it's a hard limit. You can feel it bouncing off of it. And that's indicated. So there's no telling, you know, where it actually is. Maybe it's 72, maybe it's 73, but an indicated 75. And that's all she wrote, you know. So it's this, this one's amazing to me. It's a fantastic rider. It, it looks great. The lighting is really good. I took it out at night, filled it up with gas. I got 67 miles per gallon on my first tank of gas. And that's just running flat out near 10,000 RPM up and down the interstate and stop and go traffic. So really good on fuel economy. Overall, just a very, very happy machine one that i would be very actually happy to own i mean i've had a z125 and the reason why i had to get rid of it is because of where i live at it's so far between places that the z125 literally made it worse because it took so long to get places with it there are times on certain hills that 45 was about the max achievable that i could get so this is a breath of fresh air for the mini moto market it does everything you would need it to do and that's that's all i've ever asked out of motorcycles this screen has been very good even in even the worst of sunlight it's been very good even in nighttime conditions very readable everything is clean the graphics are clean everything you can ask for We're about eight miles away from going to 200 miles fully. And it has been a very pleasurable experience. And like I said, it's been great for everybody who's rode it. Just a neat overall package that I don't think you could get anywhere else. There, there's just nothing else I've rode that actually is this much bang for the buck. At any rate, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog, and once again, I want to thank Chris Riggs with Freedom Scooters, or Freedom Motorcycles, or however he wants to call it right now, for letting me ride the Freedom Fighter 200 once again. 
Uh, it was a pleasure to test. Fantastic motorcycle. Highly recommended. Big bang for the buck for anybody looking for their first motorcycle, an extra motorcycle for commuting, or just getting back into riding. Whatever you're going to do with it, it's going to do it, and it's going to do it very, very well. So I think you would really appreciate it. Don't, don't uh, hesitate looking at it. Uh, don't write it off just because of what you think it might be. Give it a ride. Find out for yourself. And I believe you will truly, truly enjoy it. At any rate, keep that shiny side up and we'll catch you on the next ride.